welcome back to the deep dive. So I want you to imagine something. What if the most reliable information about the future didn't come from, you know, expert commentators mm -hmm. or or biased media. All the usual places. Exactly. What if it was all aggregated by a community, a self-governing one with real skin in the game, where participating in how we get the knowledge is more important than just investing in it? And that's really the core question, isn't it? It is. That's what's driving our deep dive today. We're looking into decentralized prediction markets, specifically this system called XPRD from the Metallicus community. Mm -hmm. Our mission is to really unpack how this thing is built because it's not another get rich quick crypto asset. It's framed as a uh, a hyper accountable utility driven governance system. Yeah, we're moving past the hype here. This is about operational control. So this is a fundamental dive for you, the learner, because it really shows this this crucial evolutionary step that blockchain is taking. It really is. For years, the whole conversation was just about the financial side of things, you know, digital assets. Yeah. But now we're seeing systems built to distribute authority. They actually require participation to survive. It's a huge shift from just passively holding a token and waiting. Active mandatory involvement. That's what's going to define the next phase of security and adoption. Okay, so... Let's unpack this with some real world context first, because when we say prediction market, I think most people's minds go straight to the stock market or, you know, complex financial stuff. Sure. Derivatives, that kind of thing. Yeah. But our sources, which are pulled right from XPREAD's own examples, show this. I mean, this wildly diverse range of what the community is actually interested in. And that diversity is so important. It shows the mechanism doesn't care about the topic as long as the outcome can be verified. It's just a decentralized consensus machine. For literally anything. For almost anything, yeah. So let's look at the variety. On the really specific crypto end, you've got markets predicting the exact timing of a price milestone. For example, when the easy flex token reflection will hit two digits. So greater than $10. Right, with options like third week of the 6th, 2025, or first week of Jan, 2026. Super granular. And just for clarity, a flex token reflection, yeah. that's a specific kind of reward within their ecosystem. It's very internal, very technical. But the community is confident enough in their own knowledge to bet on it. With precise dates. That's the key. And then you jump to the other end of the spectrum, you know, high stakes sports. Right. There's a market on who wins the 2025 Super Bowl listing the Patriots, Steelers, Jaguars, and a plus 13 more option. Yeah. Or even a celebrity boxing match, Anthony Joshua versus Jake Paul. It's connecting this really high-tech world to things that, you know, people actually talk about. It really is. But then it pivots right back to high finance. There's a question on whether the Fed will maintain its rate or cut by 25 basis points in January. So critical macroeconomic policy. Being predicted by this distributed group. And politics, too. A market on who President Trump will nominate as Fed chair. It lists names. Kevin Hassett, Kevin Warsh. Christopher Waller, yeah. And my personal favorite, just because it shows the scope here, is the M&A prediction. Oh, the Warner Brothers one. Yeah. Who will successfully take over Warner Brothers. The options are Paramount, Netflix, or none before June 2027. Which is so specific. This isn't just general opinion polling. No, it's a place for aggregated, specialized knowledge to prove itself. Okay, but this sheer breadth, it creates a tension, doesn't it? If you have markets ranging from a boxing match to a huge Fed decision, you need an incredibly stable, uh, trustworthy governance system to resolve them all fairly. You yeah, absolutely do. And that brings us to the core philosophy of XPRE. And this is where it gets really, really important. The community update makes a very clear distinction. Mm -hmm. XPRED is not a financial product. It's a utility-driven, community-governed token. And this is the pivot. This is the thing that people in this space often miss. To get to maturity, these systems have to prioritize governance and accountability over, you know, just quick financial gains. The principle is utility-first decentralization by design. It's a structural attempt to just sidestep the whole speculative hype cycle. So if the token isn't about passive financial gain, then what is its value? What is the utility? Well, the utility is tied directly to making the platform work. Hmm. Community members use the tokens not as an investment, but like an operational credential. An operational credential. Okay. You use them to create new markets to participate in dispute resolution, which is the, the, the critical part. Resolving the outcomes. Exactly. And also for testing new features, voting on proposals. It's like Platform fuel and your voting ID all in one. 
That sounds less like a crypto asset and more like, I don't know, shares in a co-op where you have to show up and work. That's a great way to put it. But let's talk about the elephant in the room, income. Most people hear token and they assume passive income. Right. Staking rewards, yield, that kind of thing. But XPRAD's documents are incredibly explicit here. They say it is not designed for automatic payouts, dividends, or guaranteed returns. Why is that so crucial? It's crucial because it's aimed squarely at the regulatory question. By getting rid of passive income, they're structurally trying to avoid being classified as a traditional investment contract. The Howey test. The Howey test in the U.S., yeah. If profit isn't coming from the managerial efforts of others, it's much harder to call it a security. So the XPRE philosophy forces value to come from usage. So even if the platform generates fees... It doesn't automatically send them to you. Any income generated has to be manually claimed by the user. Wait, why that extra step? If the revenue is there, why not just send it? Because automation implies a passive expectation. If you, the user, have to actively sign a transaction, a manual action, to get that value, you are proving engagement. You're proving usage. You're performing a function. You are. It just elegantly aligns the incentives around responsibility, not just holding an asset and hoping. Okay, that clarity is the foundation. But a system like this still needs rock-solid governance. If there's no CEO, no central foundation, how do you actually ensure these big market resolutions are accurate and timely? This is where they try to design the trust assumptions down to a minimum. The whole process hangs on token ownership being the only source of authority. Okay. But that authority is secured and distributed through what they call the Resolution Council. The Resolution Council. Tell us about that. The council is simply the top 21 XPRED holders. So these are the community members with the biggest vested interest in the platform's stability. And they are the designated arbiters of truth for market outcomes. That sounds like a huge amount of power in just 21 sets of hands. What stops them from colluding, say, on that Fed rate cut market to force an outcome that benefits them? And that's the genius of the specific requirement they built in. The council has 21 members, but to resolve any market, it requires a five of 21 native multi-signature approval. A five of 21 multi-sig, so think of it like a vault. Exactly, a vault that needs five different keys held by five different people just to open it. So five separate, distinct individuals from that group have to agree and sign off for any outcome to be final. Precisely. If four of them collude, it fails. If three of them are offline or disagree, it fails. It forces a genuine consensus among a minority of that council, which makes collusion well, much, much harder. And the sources say this applies to everyone, including the initial developer, Home Blocks Inc. Right. They can't just step in and resolve a market by themselves. They hold no special keys. So they're just another token holder. They are. And this mirrors the best practices across the whole Metallicus ecosystem. Multisig controls are embedded deep in the infrastructure. The system is designed to govern itself from day one. So this implies a really heavy duty for those 21 members. This isn't some ceremonial title. No, it's real operational work. They have to be monitoring outcomes, ready to sign resolutions. Because if they don't... The system grinds to a halt. If they don't do their job, markets don't resolve, users can't get their rewards, and confidence just evaporates. So platform value is literally co-created by their effort. Constant effort. That's why the docs say participation is mandatory for the platform to even function. They tie responsibility directly to ownership. Okay, let's switch gears a little to longevity, to stability. What have they fixed in place to make sure this thing stays decentralized over time? Well, the supply structure is a direct result of that whole utility first idea. Okay. They set a fixed maximum supply of just one mils in tokens, and there is no inflation mechanism at all. One million tokens? That's an exceptionally small supply for a system like this. Why so low? Scarcity is part of it, sure, but the real reason is the narrative. By fixing the supply, they're sending a signal that the token's value has to come from its use in governance and operations. Not from just speculating on its future scarcity. Exactly. You have to use the token to make the whole system work. And how is that scarce supply actually distributed to make sure it's decentralized from the get-go? The distribution is heavily weighted toward the community. 80% of the total supply is allocated directly to community participants. And the other 20%? That goes to the initial developer, Homeblock Sync. But this split is critical to avoid any claims of centralized control right out of the gate. And as we said, those developer tokens have no special rights. Zero special privileges. They participate in governance and resolutions and proposals on the exact same basis as any other token holder. There's no founder's veto. 
It's the ultimate expression of decentralization by design. It really is. And this whole structure, this intentional design, it seems incredibly focused on minimizing legal exposure from a U.S. perspective. Oh, it's a textbook case of designing for compliance proactively yeah. by avoiding passive income expectations, by forcing manual claims, and by structurally distributing authority with that 521 multisig. They're positioning it as a utility token. Clearly, a token required for platform operation, not an investment contract that depends on the central efforts of the developer. So the belief isn't that you run from regulation, but that you can build a system responsibly mm. and that you can move beyond simple speculation by just baking accountability right into the protocol and the community. Exactly. The idea is that compliance and radical decentralization can compatible. Mm. Authority flows from active participation. They're trying to hardwire responsibility into the code. That really summarizes the whole evolution perfectly. XPRED <laughs> prioritizes participation. Embeds governance into the protocol with that resolution council. And aligns incentives around duty, not just expectation. It's a phenomenal case study for how these DAOs are moving into a new phase. A utility phase. Right. And that leads to the final and I think most important question for you, the learner, to really think about. Okay. We've established that the Resolution Council, the top 21 holders, are responsible for the platform's integrity. Their participation is mandatory. Mm. But these 21 people also have the biggest financial stake in the token. Right. So in a system that's defined by utility and accountability, how does that council successfully balance the pressure to maximize their own financial return mm. against the objective responsibility of ensuring accurate, timely, and unbiased governance? That is the essential conflict, isn't it? When the governors are also the largest owners, they have to choose between their self-interest and the health of the system. It's a choice they have to make constantly. A great question to ponder. We encourage you to explore what this utility-first design means for other decentralized projects out there. Thanks for joining us for the Dev Dive.